Even the coldest of winters will not last, and the most painful hurts will soon be in the past. The grayest skies will brighten and not remain overcast. For the future in the Lord Christ Jesus holds all that you could ever ask. Even the severest famine of the heart, soul, and spirit will not last, and the most devastating disappointments, frustrations, and feeling of impotence will one day, too, be in the past. The great deceiver, that tempter, will not always be at large. He is vanquished, and he will become the outcast. For a future in the Lord Christ Jesus is holy and pure, and the arm of the Lord is not short, and his reach is vast. Even time and space will not forever last, and this decadent and sinful world will be changed. The ways of man will soon be in the past. For a future in the Lord Christ Jesus will be full of his truth, his joy, and peace, and we will get to partake of the most wonderful repast. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hanging in there. Wonderful. So we're having an intimate conversation with Miss Josie Brain. And um, I'm very excited about this because I've known you for a little while now. And I had no idea for the longest time that you were a poet. So I'm honored to sit here with you on this amazing velour blue couch um, to have this conversation with you. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, could you please tell me a little bit about yourself and how and when you started writing poetry? Hmm. A little bit about myself. Well, I, um, I was born in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Proud of that. And, um, but I uh, got sent off to England um, right after high school, and then I decided to live there for a while. And then, you know, I um, from there, I moved all over the place. I lived in Africa for about five years, and I moved to the Middle East for about six years, and then to Australia for, for a little while. But I didn't like it very much, I must admit. And then um, back to England. And then eventually I ended up in Canada, mostly because I have relatives here, mm -hmm. not many anywhere else. And they said, you know, you have to stop running all over the place and come home. I said, what do you mean come home? I wasn't born there. You know, I, I have a Jamaican and a, and, a, and a British passport. They said, we don't care. You're the younger one. You come home. And I said, okay, and I had planned to live in, in Quebec, but it wasn't practical, you know, when I got here, even though we actually moved to Quebec because at the time I was married and mm -hmm. his head office was in Toronto. So I said, okay, if I have to um, move to Ontario, I haven't heard, you know, I didn't like it very much. It has to be a little place called Oakville. And they said, why would you want to go to Oakville? I said, because it's a bit like home. Lots of oak trees. Some of the roads are not, you know, paved yet. And by the way, guys, I'm ancient because this is, um, it was in, when did I come here permanently? I think it was 1989 mm -hmm. when half the roads in Burlington and Oakville weren't paved. It was really strange. And oak trees everywhere. And I'm a nature freak. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, um, you know, I used to climb mountains and I was really tinier than your, you know, really? your twin. Yeah. Wow. You know, uh, I, that's I a have, new thing now. Yeah, I used to climb in, 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 in Austria. Wow. And um, a friend of mine flew me over the Kilimanjaro in a little Cessna, which I would never do now because all I would <laughs> think about is crashing. Right. Anyway, I, 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 I came here and, you know, things happen in life. Mm -hmm. And one evening, you know, I'm a believer. I was on the floor and making a fist and I said, With, you've blessed me all my life. Is this what it's come to? Mm -hmm. You know, what are we going to do about it? And I was hollering and carrying on and 
I didn't go off to work for a whole week and crazy and it might seem unbelievable but one because you asked how I started writing honestly the Holy Spirit inside my head he said I want you to write in just words or phrases how you see me mm. and I wrote maybe I think it was a thousand words Wow. Of the different names, started with the biblical names of how we see the Lord God. Mm -hmm. And when I got to a thousand, he says, now pick up your pen. And I started writing. And um, as of today, I think I've written about almost 1,500. And, um, and I think this book came out in 2015. I'm not sure. I can't mm -hmm. remember because I had good friends who gave me a little push where it hurt most, you know, and said, yes. you can't sit on them. Right. And it's, a, you know, it's, I'm a believer, but I don't mm -hmm. go around knocking people over the head with a Bible. Right. And I thought this is a nice way to introduce people to our creator. Amazing. So that's... that's so you would say that a lot of your poetry comes from your uh, personal experiences. Oh, it's you know I've 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 been very blessed. I've I've visited about thirty eight countries mm -hmm. and spent time in them. And also my great grandfather, who I dedicated the book to, mm -hmm. and my mom, but mostly my great grandfather. He used to have an office with wall to wall books, and mm -hmm. and he wrote, and he says, "My little he used to call me his little princess." He says, "My little princess." Rightly so. He says, "I want you. You know, you're going to write too." And so before I was five years old, I was reading regular books because he taught me. Wow. So when I went to school, they didn't know what to do with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm that bright. It's just that he started with me at a very early age. Right. And, and I thought, you know, I love my, my great granddad mm -hmm. and I want to write too. And um, one day it happened. So he is a writer. He was a writer as he well. He was a writer okay. as well. And he used to write in our daily gleaner mm. as well. You know, the local paper. Okay. And this was in... In Jamaica. In Jamaica. When I was okay. little. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to you um, to share your faith through poetry? Well, as I mentioned before, I don't think, you know, I, especially when you live in different countries, mm -hmm. you have to respect other people and their faith. Correct. But we know that there is only one creator and one God. But as I say, I don't believe in walking around and knocking people over the head with a Bible. It's, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, it's just not the way things are done. And so if you were to look at or read my book, mm -hmm. you will notice a lot of them have a Bible verse okay. at the end of it. And it was a little, not just trickery, Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is if you read it and you see the verse and you read it, and you know how some people are, they said, oh, it's just her and her nonsense. And they open a Bible just to check that verse. Mm -hmm. Then they real. I got them to, to open the word. And right. um, at the same time, they're reading the work I was blessed to, to be able to do. Mm -hmm. So... I remember having a conversation with you where um, we were talking about how it's important to you to be knowledgeable about other religions. I know some um, pastors and faiths, they'd say like, well, it's not necessary to know other people's religions, like you should only be pouring yours in. But I thought it was a very, very interesting comment that you had made when you said, I like to know about other religions because yes if you don't and and what started that conversation with another friend I threw out a lot of books mm -hmm. that I'd bought over the years which I didn't think were right okay. but like copies of the Quran like I kept a copy and somebody said why would you want to have that in in mm -hmm. I said how can I make a conversation with someone mm -hmm. and convince them when I know nothing about their religion. Mm. So the thing is, you, you read it and to find out what the basics and the principles are before you can argue any, you know, or make a conversation with anyone and to try to tell them that's wrong when you don't know what they do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, as I say, you know, you can 
persuade, try to persuade people, but really it's all about the Lord. He's the one who brings, you know, people to him Mm -hmm. and he uses some of us. Right. So it's like not, sorry, not to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying you don't do that with aggression. Right. You try to love your neighbor Mm -hmm. and you try to do it in a gentle manner. Correct. And and it's a courtesy. Mm-hmm. If you're going to argue with someone and you don't know, you know, and you're saying, no, where, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. You haven't a clue when you don't know, you know, their background or what they normally read or whatever you, in, in, even in everyday life, you mm-hmm. can't, um, you know, you don't want to be having fisticuffs every time you have a conversation with someone. Right. So you... Um, try to learn something about their background. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it happens to touch on religion, what they're, you know, what it's all about. Mm-hmm. And then you can say, well, you know, this compares to this mm-hmm. and, 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 and think about that, you know. I know when I first met you, um, it was a faith-based um, event Mm -hmm. an organization because I'm a chef so I was cooking for that Mm -hmm. um something that I really connected you uh to was that you love to serve people Mm -hmm. because that particular program it wasn't like hey it's Christian so come on in it was more like everybody uh, everybody is welcome you know everybody shared a meal you watched a video and you had a small group but one thing I really noticed about everything that you were saying is that people need love right people need love and we ought to love them and do unto them as we would want done unto us Mm -hmm. and I fell deeply madly in love with you (laughs) Uh, because I just felt like um, if there were more people uh, who, you know, if you want to use the word preach that, like just Mm -hmm. love each other as you want someone to love you, um, why do you feel that that is so important? Being a Christian author uh, where, you know, a lot of the world will look at you like, you know, you're a Christian author, like stay in your own lane. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. but you are more so like there is no lane. There are no No, white lines and there definitely are no yellow lines. Like you truly love just out of the heart. You know, I learned a long time ago that I have to love everyone, but I doesn't it doesn't mean I necessarily like everyone (laughs) because we have some strange people in the world. So (laughs) you, you truly don't have to like everyone. Okay. But you try to do for others as you would have them do to you. I mean, even yesterday in my apartment building, I have neighbors two doors down. And they're in their 80s and 90s almost. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought to myself, I don't even understand how they get around. And they never speak to anyone, but mostly because they don't have English. And I was taking my, my garbage down to the chute. And... The old man was heading towards my door, and I thought, what's he up to? Mm -hmm. Hope he hasn't lost his way. And he touched my arm, and he says, no, come, come. He doesn't have much English. And I went in, and I felt so blessed because I looked around, and there was a a young man that I say hello to once in a while, heading for the elevator. And I said, come here, because I think something is wrong. Mm -hmm. He came, and we went in. And his wife was flat on the floor. Oh, no. Um, Her head had obviously hit the tiles in the bathroom, and part of her body was in the little Mm -hmm. corridor. And, you know, I didn't freak out. Mm -hmm. I didn't even worry about uh, distance. All I wanted to do was get this poor old lady off the floor. But, of course, I couldn't lift her, and that young man lifted her, and we were able to put her on the sofa. Mm -hmm. And I prayed for them. When I, before I fell asleep, and then this morning I called the property manager, and I said, this happened. Will you please uh, call their contact to let them know mm-hmm. that, you know, a parent fell? So it's that's a way of expressing love. It's not being selfish mm-hmm. is something, you know, we need in, in, in this world. Yes, this that's very – and especially right now. And to be a part of a project like um, – 
beat the COVID blues with uh, the Canadian Caribbean Association. I think it's so phenomenal. And I'm honored that I can sit here with you and have this conversation because I know it's mostly about love and um, doing to others as, you know, we want done unto ourselves. And I brought my daughters today because I think that our future generation needs to learn to love without borders uh, because a lot of people are right now, you know, whether it's in their homes or whether it's Mm -hmm. in care homes or uh, wherever, um, they have that ability to self-sustain only for so long based on the fact that, you know, they're so, people are so used to being around their, their family and stuff like that. So like, how, how would you say that you've been dealing with this whole COVID situation? It's, it's, unfortunately, I wasn't well just before COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm a nature freak. I like to go for walks and watch bunny rabbits shooting in and out and, you know, seeing, you know, a red breast fly by and, mm-hmm. you know, and talk to the lizards, even girls. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm a little crazy that way. And But when COVID hit, mm-hmm. I didn't want to leave my, my apartment. Yes. And, and, you know, thank God for my pussycats because I don't know what I'd do. And um, this is really my first social evening out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, um, I would pray and just thank God for the life I've had. You know, I get to travel at one time all around the world. And, you know, it's crazy the things I used to do. And I used to love climbing mountains. Mm-hmm. And the people used to look at me because I was very tiny. And, you know, it's creation just blows me over. And from my apartment, when I look out to my left, I can see the lake. Mm -hmm. And when I look out to my right, I see, you know, um, the escarpment. Mm -hmm. And it's so when I get up in the mornings, the first thing I do is look out for the birdies. They like to poop on my windowsill. I don't like that part. (laughs) But I found out why they did it. Because they'd come trotting and my pussycats would jump up and dare them. Then they realized there is a, mm. a, a glass in between. And Birdie says, okay, you can, you can go you where know. it hurts. And <laughs> oh, they'd no. poop, poop at them and it <laughs> oh, would go goodness. all over the sill. It's really right. funny. That is how, funny. How, I know I sound silly, but, you know, I love animals. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I love creation. Right. And I notice stuff like that, which yeah. is a little bit silly. And, you know, then I have people like you who call me every once in a while just to make sure I'm alive. Mm -hmm. And I manage. Yes. But um, it can be difficult sometimes. I'm not Mm going to pretend. Right. So. So one thing I was uh, really curious about is I know you said you wrote your book in Awesome Wonder Mm -hmm. in 2015. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have any plans of writing and publishing more books? Oh, I've been working on three books. One's Amazing. a regular book. Okay. Um, because, as I said, I've been blessed. to I've been to more than 30 countries mm-hmm. and spent time in them. Yes. And I have like a thousand f- photographs. I used to w- walk around with my Nikon with mm-hmm. a telephoto and wide, you know, <laughs> you know, back in the day. Yes, I remember. And um, I... I'm doing another poetry book because, as I said, I've written almost 1,500. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're working on doing that at the same time, I'm not quite sure how it happened, but I feel blessed that, that I could do that. Amazing. And I'm um, doing one for um, about women in the Bible and, 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 and with special women now, mm-hmm. you know, and um, – We'll see how it goes from there. Every once I need a kick in the butt to get going because I get tired of Zoom and I get tired of a keyboard. Mm. So, but I'm trying. And one, and, and the reason why it sounds like such a lot is because I write everything by hand in a notebook. Right. And then it has to be typed up afterwards. Right. So, you know, it's, you have to focus on that. Right. So... Um, I know you're going to read us a poem, but I have a little surprise for you while you get your page ready. I wrote a little poem, too. Um, I used to, I I shouldn't say I used to, but I used to write poetry quite a bit 
um, to get my feelings out, mm -hmm. right? So I wrote this poem just for you because I feel super inspired by um, how you lay it all on the line and yet you're so humble and you continue to excel in showing me how to be that righteous woman. You know, so I wrote this for you. You mean because I'm stupid enough to tell you that sometimes? <laughs> because you are amazing <laughs> enough to put me in my place, reel me back, and to set me on my path the way I'm supposed to be, according to Miss Josie Brain. <laughs> so this one is for you. Love is wonderful. Love is sweet. Love was brought down from heaven. Love is free. Love is a most precious gift. Love was given by God, but brought down by Jesus Christ. It's beautiful, and thank you. <laughs> and it's for all of us. I mean, if it, if it wasn't COVID-19 and you would allow me to hug you, you know I would be closer dup, dup, to dup, you, dup. but I won't, because I know that you'll probably slap me. <laughs> so I am a little frightened of you, <laughs> as much as I love you and adore you. You, you know something, don't ever be frightened of me. It's just because I wish the best for you and you have five babies to deal with. Yes. So you have to be careful. Yes. Makes me sound like an old woman, doesn't it? But never You're mind. You're definitely not an old woman. So, so, I, I'm so really I know. I'm looking forward to you reading to me. So time is of the, um, of the essence. Mm -hmm. And this is for everybody in this room. So it's called Peace in Him Who Gives You Rest. May you always be doubly blessed. May your prayer be answered in your distress. May the Lord give you rest when you need recess. And may he give you the desire of your heart when you obey his behest. May you always be free from stress. May you always be his friend and not just a temporary guest. May you always feel free and to the Lord your sins confess. And may you love him enough not to always put him to the test. May you always seek him first and your time with him invest. May you always find comfort and lay your head upon his breast. May you always know in your heart that our Lord is the dearest and the best. And may you always remember that he forgives and will never love you any less. May you always be free from the plague of restlessness. May your disappointments in life be few and not oppress. May your deeds be for his sake and not to impress. And may you learn to bless with interest. May you always be protected from the north, the south, the east, and the west. May you always give to the Lord of your very best. May you always live in his word and every lesson digest. And may you always find peace in him who gives you rest. Thank you. Yay. Or as, as the poets do, they snap, snap. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you taking the time um, on this special day to come and have a conversation with us. And uh, we love you. And I really, really hope that you write many, many books and that these girls will be inspired and we can continue on. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, this is a beautiful birthday gift. To be quite honest, I never thought anybody would remember it was my birthday or I would be playing with my putty cats and hugging them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being truthful, but, uh, yes, you know, know, you know, like when you called me on the phone was mm -hmm. busy, everybody from all over the world were calling me and I thought, yes. what's going on? So, you know, he answers my prayers. I believe he Because does. COVID has separated people mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. You know, and most of the times what, what depresses me when you were asking me how I was coping was when I look at the figure in the, in the United States, mm -hmm. this is why I have a go at you when you don't wear your mask, mm -hmm. because they were behaving the same way. Yeah. And now, as of today, over one, 183,000 people are dead in six months. And I can't wrap that around my head. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's, it's good for us to have a laugh and a giggle, but there is something very serious happening around mm-hmm. us. And the numbers are crawling very slowly in Canada as well. Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful. And that's why we're really, really appreciative for uh, projects such as uh, Beat the COVID Blues, which keep people um, out of depression. And our goal is to make sure that we're pouring in that love and that light and letting Mm -hmm. people know no matter um, the fact that it is a pandemic is serious. But at the end of the day, uh, we will get through this because we are in it together and we are going to do what is necessary to pour that love and light into your life, whether whether it's through the camera, you know, um, YouTube channel. So we want to thank the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halton Mm -hmm. for having us here. And of course, you know, the funders for the amazing grant opportunities and to literally bring happiness and joy into people's lives. And we really appreciate you coming and sitting with us and um, reading your poetry. Again, I really look forward to hearing more of it. And hopefully we can have another intimate conversation with Miss Josie Brain. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And and by the way, girls, because, you know, you did mention on camera that the girls are here. Yes. There are some funny ones in there, which my pussycats wrote, not me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm serious. (laughs) So you can have a giggle. Yes. So not all of them are serious. You know, some of them are really serious. Well, I was yes. Like, Whoa. <laughs> well, it's about it's about life, yes. and okay, I, well. I've been blessed because yeah. the thing about travel is that you meet different people from different backgrounds. Yes, and I've made some wonderful friends around mm-hmm. the world. Some of them have even passed away. Mm-hmm. You know, because there's always war everywhere I go. Oh, and my mom, and before she, before I lost her, she mm-hmm. used to freak out. But at least when I lived in Africa, she agreed to come visit with me. And Amazing. then, you know, when I, I, I frightened everybody because I was the camera happy person. <laughs> and I, um, I saw a lion mm-hmm. eating, killed a giraffe and was eating it. And I thought that bugger. Yeah. And we were in a, in a Volkswagen minibus. Mm-hmm. And I, the driver stopped. I said, stop, I want to take a photograph. And then they all freaked out and nobody could... Sh- that's what I love. Nobody could shout at me mm-hmm. or make a noise because I grabbed my camera, slid the door and jumped out and went right up to the lion. <laughs> and I have the most incredible photograph. Yeah. And nobody could say, what are you doing or shout? Right. Everybody was shaking. So I got back in, slid the door and I said, don't you know? I said, you, that if they're eating, as long as you don't challenge them for their food, mm-hmm. they don't care if you come and yank their tail as long as you don't touch their food. Go figure. So that's what I used to learn about wild animals Mm -hmm. when I lived there. So it was fun. Well, I don't think we will be uh, taking pictures of lions lions. anytime soon. (laughs) Um, Because that sounds a little scary. (laughs) So one day, girls, whenever I ever get to it, I must dig up some of my photographs to show you. They're kind of nice. I'm telling you. The camera is off, right? Yeah, we're oh, still no. really Why? <laughs> it's good. That's what we wanted. This is the part we were looking forward to. You yeah, know? this is the part we're looking forward to where yeah. we can just be free. Like five minutes of just literal the, the, intimate the, conversation. The, the only thing I ever did that mm-hmm. I never enjoyed was ride a camel. I don't know how people in the Middle East do it. Oh, yes, the whole... That thing goes up and down. <laughs> yeah. and it's the most It's like you got to get... You know, it's funny. I used to live in Saudi Arabia and... Um, The Bedouins, right? Yeah, that's how they 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 travel. That's right. So um, it's like, uh, you know, when you do those different dances, you have to like get in to the rhythm. And no, but it's just going to like get into the rhythm of the camel. But it's very uncomfortable. It is. It is it very is. uncomfortable. But you've been like so many different places around the world and you're like, you're so seasoned with so much culture it, I and think, everything. I, think, I just love it. I think the Lord was preparing me for the writing. I think so too. You know, because there's a yes. lot of good um, poems in there. But I, I, yeah, I can't wait to get my book going. Mm-hmm. I've the, done the big, other I, one. Yeah, a regular one. A yes. regular one. Yes. So, do you have like um, like a topic that you're um, working on right now? Is it is it still Christian based, or is it is no, it a it's, novel? It's, it's a story. It's 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 
it's about life in mm-hmm. general okay. and you know picking up on some of the experiences i had mm-hmm. um when i lived in all you know like in africa and the middle east mm-hmm. and i'll never forget when my mom came to visit me i took her up to the ethiopian Kene- kenyan border mm-hmm. to 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 see um a group of of um people who lived up there and I'll never forget my mom coming up and she says my darling she says we're not related to them <laughs> because you know what they, so some funny. of them were seven feet tall oh think yes. about seven seven yes. feet tall wow it was so That's it's, it's just incredible you yes. know and um but I wanted to go into Ethiopia but they wouldn't let me in they don't they wouldn't let anybody in Strip i wanted rules. to go to the jewish commu- community there mm. mm-hmm. you know and but they wouldn't let they wouldn't let anybody in it, you know it's um and that makes me old because i lived in in kenya when kenyatta was president wow and he used to chop people's heads off <laughs> well then well I lived in Saudi Arabia where they have an actual like arena where they do that Ooh. and people come and they watch um, it's actually that's quite what I, interesting <laughs> I'm like no I'm okay with that no that's what yeah. I mean about human nature and mm-hmm. I mean how can you love watching somebody getting their head lopped off no matter right. how much you dislike them that's ridiculous yeah but that's how life is and it's right. It hasn't changed in a lot of places. It's mm-hmm. even worse. But, um, you know. I'm yeah. thankful I live in Milton. Well, you live in, um, you also live in Halton. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. I just think, like, you have this thing about you where you're, like, everything about you is so graceful and so, like, poised. <laughs> and yet you are so Don't stern <laughs> you're so Don't stern and this. you always tell me like listen like this is the way you need to be and stop doing this stuff and <laughs> I understand um you know where you're coming from but you get mad at me I do get mad at you sometimes <laughs> I do because I'm like um I wasn't ready for that comment can we hold that for like another you know a few months especially <laughs> when I'm cooking for you at one in the morning yes the yes. only thing that saved me saved me in 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 that situation mm-hmm. is to know that this fantastic chef can realize that she has a friend that can actually cook, cook. and then she <laughs> yes. says can i have a seconds yes. so i have to go and cook more <laughs> hear that girls yes it was your mom thinks <laughs> i can cook <laughs> well i i can honestly say i have never in my life had uh scrambled eggs with uh broccoli ever <laughs> Um, I love scrambled eggs. I love broccoli, but I've never had it together. So and, I just thought it was... But you're a chef. You're supposed to know things like I that. I know, but it was just really like a weird combination. <laughs> um, I know the girls always talk about weird food combos. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> and I'm like, no, thank you. Uh, but yes, I, but I was asked- reluctant. I know I was straight reluctant. I was like, uh, I'm like, how do I eat this and not like and tell I said, it that I taste don't want it. <laughs> and it tasted really good. And guess what? She said, now go make seconds. Mm-hmm. I and did. In that manner as well, sweethearts. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I dropped a please in there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I dropped a please in there. I don't remember saying like not saying please. <laughs> That's the one thing I learned yeah. um, to do when I was, because when I got married, I, I didn't know how to cook. Mm. I never had cooked because I grew up, in, you know, in, in my home in Jamaica. We mm-hmm. had household help. Right. We had a cook and household cleaner. And mm-hmm. I, I was sent away from the kitchen because I was, a ti- I was tiny, really mm-hmm. tiny. Mm-hmm. And I said, you're getting under our feet. You're going to get burnt out, out. That's funny. It is funny. And then I got married and realized I couldn't cook. A cup of coffee, if you ask me. <laughs> and I had to learn oh. fast how to cook. Yeah. You know, it's... Amazing. But it's... Uh, and now I can cook. Amazing. Scrambled <laughs> eggs and broccoli. See, there's hope for you. She's the ramen noodle girl. Uh. She can boil the kettle and pour the noodles. Or pour <laughs> the water into the noodles. And she is 
Good well, to go. Well, you see, the thing is, got to give her a little pinch. She says, if mommy's a chef mm -hmm. and has restaurants, why the heck should I learn to cook? That's exactly her logic. See? Like, I exactly. got it in one, honey. Yeah. <laughs> she, that, that's why you're their favorite as well. Because and probably over the fact that, like, she, she's, she's going like this, like, yes, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you.